In general, when we get data from the web, how do we know that it is good? You need to know something about the data to see where it fails. One of the worst mistakes scientists, data scientists make is not looking at the data. Just running a machine learning algorithm over the data without doing an initial sanity check may lead to very bad results. In addition to looking at the data, we might need automated techniques. The idea is to master your data and provide validation rules. And the other thing we can do is to come up with automated checks for the data, most of which are somewhat incomplete. It is hard to capture all the exceptions. What some organizations do is to come up with a master list with rules about how it can be updated. We can't really do this for web data. Here's a simple example. Names may include special characters other than letters, such as spaces, hyphens. To merge our data, here are some simple rules. And this is the code for the example. And this is what we this is what we get when we run it. We find names with special characters in them. What do we do? We could convert them into a clean form through a conversion process. In our case, there are HTML character codes so we can write a function to turn them back into characters. But this might be a lot of work just to get the join to work. So we will focus on a more tolerant version of the join. There are many tools that can be used to do it, and some of them are listed here. And this is the code for simplest possible version for of string equality. But we want to relax the um, not equal to find similarity between the strings. So we'll focus on string overlap because it is conceptually simpler and widely used. Here we take fragments of the strings and measure the percentage of fragments that are the same between the two strings. This is done using Jacquard similarity. We use dollar sign as padding. We are considered three grams, so we pad with two dollar characters at each end. First, take a string, turn into a set of substrings of length q. Second, compare the sets for similarity. And we use the distance measure called Jacquard. It is a measure of the distance between sets, for example, a size of intersection or car cardinality of the union. Let's see this in action using one of the record linking toolkits called Megalin. Megalin is a set of libraries for recording linking at scale. There are two components. Tokenizer pulls out the qgrams. The join looks at the similarity between the qgrams. Here we set the q equals to five and we do a jacquard join between the two tables using the qgram tokenizer with a threshold of 0 0.35. And this is the result. Some, matching per some matches perfectly, others match less well, such as the horror Kruger, but uh, the overlap is enough, 0 0.44. So we will still use the match. And we have more rows, therefore we have more rows in our linked results. And finally, we want to present those data that we've cleaned. First of all, is everything good? Do we have any missing value? And what do we do about them? One option is to just drop the rows with nulls in certain columns using drop NA. This will drop rows if they have null values in any column. Here we restrict where the nulls are looked for. The, so we look at the born column using subset equals born. Another option is to fill in some sort of default values, such as the mean or mode, 
but this skews the data. For plotting, it is fine to leave nulls in as they will be ignored. Recall that our goal is to understand whether or not most CEOs are older than 40, so we want to get an idea of the dis distribution of birth dates. Here we group CEOs using group I and then show the group that was born on 1940, August 24, using get group. Note that the, there is just one person. Now we want to count how many CEOs are born on each day. And for this, we use the function count over each group. So not many CEOs share the same birthday. We can do the same in SQL using group by born to create the groups and then putting count company in the select clause to do the counting. To get a better sense of how birthdays cluster, we will group them into decades and plot by decade using the bar chart. So first, for every non-novel born date, we will calculate the decade using apply map and then add as an extra column called born uh, underscore decade in exact underscore df. This bar chart shows the number of CEOs born in each decade it shows that most CEOs are born before the 1980s. The biggest decades are the 1950s and the 1960s, meaning that the age of most CEOs is about 50 and, or 60. So no tuple can be in more than one bin. You need to make sure that the bins are the right structures. In our case, decades, instead of individual days. Grouping and aggregating is sometimes also called reducing. And this concludes our lecture today. Thank you for watching.